If you've ever considered collecting mushrooms, you should probably start with being able to recognize the ammonitas. You have to know what ammonitas are, because they're the ones that people usually eat and get poisoned from. So here's some identifying features. Ammonitas have gills underneath the cap, right here, and they often have a veil, like you see here, or it could be around the base of the stalk. Okay, so now you know death caps and not to eat them. While you're at it, why not at least meet the other major macro fungi groups? Here to guide us is mycologist Roy Halling. He's a researcher at the New York Botanical Garden and is president of the Mycological Society of America. Okay, the major groups are... Puffballs, porcinis, which we call bolletes, or rushulas, or polypores. Then there's cup fungi and jelly fungi. Chanterelles, morels. And false morels. Then there are coral fungi, and then there are ones, what we call the spine fungi, or hydnums, because instead of having pores or gills on the underside, they have little spines that hang down. Then there are the gill fungi, which we covered with the ammonitas. Oh, and let's not forget the earth tongues. Uh, stink horns. These time-lapse videos were taken by Kent Leffler at Cornell University. This is 30 hours crunched down into 16 seconds. Okay, back to classification. Those are the major groups of fungi that are visible to us without a microscope, according to Peterson's Field Guide to Mushrooms and Roy Halling. Halling has agreed to take us on a fungi foraging foray. Where are we? On the grounds of the garden, uh. so we can see some of these specimens in the flesh. He's been foraging for at least 30 years and has discovered about 50 new species. I don't count. <laughs> but it's kind of a drop in the mushroom basket anyway. I mean, mycologists estimate that there are about 1.5 million species of fungi on the planet. Of that 1.5 million, we know probably 4 or 5 percent maximum. So, oh, here, we walk right by. Our first sighting. And this is in the in the porcini mushroom family. Instead of having gills or lamellae on the bottom, it has this spongy surface with pores and tubes. Okay, so there's a trick. Boletes, which include many edible species, although we do not recommend you eat any you find, are spongy under the cap. And this is one of the ones that has a symbiosis with the roots. The roots of trees, that is. You see, some mushrooms partner up with trees. This bolete, for example, partnered with an oak tree. It happens underground with the mushroom's microscopic cells called hyphae. And it's those hyphae that are translocating water and nutrients from the soil to the tree root, which is then passed up into the tree. And the tree is photosynthesizing, fixing carbon dioxide into carbohydrates, starch. And the tree sends that carbohydrate back down to the roots and then to the fungus but not all mushrooms partner. Okay, these mushrooms over here are not root associated. They're decomposing this wood chip mulch. Mushrooms like this one, and it falls into the gill fungus group, get their energy from decomposing dead organic matter. See all of that? This is where all the active decomposition is going on. Which brings us to another point. Mushroom foraging does not necessarily result in mushroom death. It would be analogous to picking apples off an apple tree. So you're basically picking the fruit of the fungus, even though it's not a fruit. The real work of the fungus is going on underground. This is just the reproductive part. So let's review. We have the symbiotic deal-striking fungi, we have the independent decomposers, and there's one more category, and that's the parasites. Think athlete's foot or the mildew on the leaves of this tulip tree. It happens every year. Can you imagine if these weren't decomposed every year? how deep we would be in dead leaves. That's what fungi do in the environment. They decompose complex organic matter. Which is a pretty important thing. But Halling says even though fungi make up their own kingdom and they do this important job, we still don't know much about them. You know, I don't want to get really waxy philosophical here, but, but everybody wants to know, at least I think, what things are. Fundamental basic biology, putting names on on biodiversity. That's where it starts. From there, then you can do everything else. 
And if you too want to be able to put names to fungi faces and tell your witch's butter from your dead man's fingers or your scarlet elf cup from your rosy gill fairy helmet or your trumpet of death from your fuzzy navel, Howling recommends buying a field guide. I'm Flora Lichtman for Science Friday.